Hi everyone, I'm Antonis, and today I'm very excited to talk to you about SLOMO, a framework for contention aware performance prediction NFE. This is joint work with my advisor Vyasekar and our collaborators at CMU. Our protagonist for today is Dwight, who is now an NFE operator at his local ISP. Dwight's goal is to deploy a software firewall in the ISP's NFE cluster such that its throughput SLA of 1 Gbps is met. Dwight can either collocate the firewall on server A with two already running NFs, or on server B with three other NFs. Dwight tries both options before deciding where to spawn the firewall. On server A, he sees that the firewall can process 1.3 gigabps of traffic with no problem. On server B, however, despite having followed standard NFV deployment assumptions, he sees that his firewall can only process 0.7 gigabps of traffic, which is almost 50% lower than running it on server A. Dwight is extremely confused. Now let us look at Dwight's problem a little more formally. Dwight is given a set of NFs. One of these NFs is the target, or the NF whose throughput he cares about. The remaining NFs the target will be co-located with are competitors. The question then is simple. How can Dwight predict the expected throughput of his target NF for each co-location scenario without actually having to deploy it? Our work, SLOMO, is a contention-aware performance prediction framework that addresses that question. Slomo leverage is a data-driven understanding of contention to build efficient performance prediction models for any target NF. Slomo is accurate, with its average prediction error being less than 8%, which can be up to 60% better than the error of prior work. Slomo is not the first framework that looks at performance prediction NFV. Prior works have demonstrated that slowdown is a result of contention for shared server hardware resources. In NFV, these resources lie in the server's memory subsystem. Dobresco et al. showed that performance degradation stems from contention in the last level cache and modeled the target's throughput drop as a function of the rate at which competitors collectively access this shared cache. Unfortunately, we observe that in a modern cluster with line rates reaching 100 gigabps, the prediction error of this method is large, often exceeding 40%. This observation motivated us to revisit possible contention sources. We found that contention is in practice more nuanced as it manifests itself simultaneously and independently at three different choke points. In the DDIO slice of the cache that hosts packets during I.O., in the last level cache, and when NFs compete for, ama for available main memory bandwidth. In our work, we show that cache access rate only partially characterizes contention, and in order to accurately predict performance, we need to systematically model all different contention choke points with multiple resource utilization metrics. Slomo draws inspiration from a blueprint presented in the microarchitecture community that introduces the concepts of contentiousness and sensitivity. Contentiousness quantifies the amount of pressure that a set of competing NFs apply on the shared hardware resources. Sensitivity, on the other hand, quantifies how susceptible the target NF is to competitors' contentiousness. Slomo leverages these two concepts to predict the target's performance drop. Contentiousness is a property of the competing NFs that captures the pressure that the competitors apply on the hardware resources. To understand this idea better, we see an example of the target NF in two collocation scenarios, with competitors of different contentions. In the first case, the competitor is occupying a large part of the cache, which is accessing frequently, whereas in the second case, the competitor has the exact opposite behavior. Intuitively, we can see that the first competitor is more contentious than the second one, as his larger occupancy and cache access rate can trigger more evictions to DRAM for the target NF. A natural challenge with characterizing contentiousness is identifying the right metrics to do so. We identify an opportunity in using the PCM hardware counters, which can expose the competitor's resource utilization at multiple granularities through hundreds of candidate metrics. In our analysis, we show how Slomo picks a practical set of representative metrics for contentiousness characterization. Now, sensitivity is a property of the target NF that quantifies how susceptible the target is to slowdown due to competitors' contentiousness. In this visual example, we show the case where the firewall runs alone on the server and achieves a baseline level of throughput. Once a competing NF is added to the mix, the competitor starts occupying its own share of resources and might thus cause slowdown for the target NF. We define the target sensitivity as the function that estimates the target's throughput relative to competitor's contentiousness. We find that in practice, sensitivity is a complex, nonlinear, and NF-specific function, and that modeling it is challenging. 
Now, Slomo's data-driven insights enable accurate modeling of various sensitivity functions. Specifically, we find that sensitivity exhibits clear phase transitions as competing contentiousness increases. This allows Slomo to model sensitivity as a piecewise function of contentiousness using known ensemble methods from the machine learning literature. To understand how these concepts map to a concrete system, Slomo consists of an offline and an online component. Given a library of available NFs, Slomo's offline component is responsible for profiling each NF for contentiousness and sensitivity. In real time, Slomo takes as input a target NF and a set of competitors. The first step of the online process is to compose the aggregate contentiousness of the competitors and then provide that value as input to the target sensitivity function in order to predict its throughput. Now let us present some brief evaluation results. To evaluate Slomo's accuracy, we compared its predictions with two prior works. The first predictor by Debrescu et al. focused on building a cash access rate based model, whereas Bubble Up, a prior work by Mars et al., predicts performance as a function of the working set size of the competitors. In this graph, we plot the prediction error of Slomo alongside the two prior works for a variety of experiments for each NF. We observe that Slomo achieves an average error of less than 8% and outperforms prior work by up to 60%. Finally, we'll look at how Slomo's predictions can inform efficient NF placement decisions such that the cluster server resources are used optimally. Using as baseline the scenario where all NFs were optimally deployed across servers, Slomo incurs less than 2% overhead in terms of number of servers needed. Rescue, a prior work that argues in favor of preventing contention among competitors using cache partitioning tools, incurs 6% overhead and few SLA violations. Finally, the Rescue's conservative cache access rate based approach results in 14% server overhead. As we can see, Slomo improves cluster utilization without incurring SLA violations. Now, before concluding, I would like to dedicate some time in discussing three frequently asked questions about Slomo. The first question is, what is special about NFE workloads? Or in other words, why can't I use any generic predictor instead of Slomo? There are two elements to this answer. First, due to NFE deployment assumptions, NFs mostly contend for resources in the member subsystem, whereas general purpose applications might contend for many other resources that are relevant to NFE. Additionally, NFs are streaming workloads with idiosyncratic memory access patterns, with little memory use for packets and high memory use for NF-specific data structures, such as rule tables. Therefore, we find that general purpose prediction frameworks pay too little attention to the resources that are most important to NFE. The second question is about Slomo's universality. Can Slomo be used for any NF in architecture? Recall that Slomo quantifies contentiousness by abstracting out the competition using a set of hardware resource utilization counters that are exposed by PCM. That is a key design decision and a potential limitation of Slomo, in that potential choke points that are not monitored by PCM will not be captured. For instance, contention at the NIC, which can potentially be another uh, choke point, will not be taken into consideration by Slomo. Finally, our last question is whether we could substitute performance prediction with contention prevention through resource isolation. This question stems from the recent release of CAT by Intel, a tool that partitions the last level cache such that each core running NF gets a dedicated slice to the LLC. Prior work has looked at preventing contention into slowdown this way, but we identified several issues with this approach. This graph shows the total throughput of a number of core running IP routers and shows that the observed throughput with isolation is far from ideal. That is for two reasons. First, LLC isolation is not sufficient at eliminating contention, and second, LLC partitioning reduces the baseline throughput of core running NFs. In other words, CAT alone is unable at preventing contention into slowdown and can also result in suboptimal performance. However, in our paper we have an analysis of how Slomo can be used in combination with CAT to accurately predict performance drop. This final remarks conclude my talk. Contention aware performance prediction is critical for NFV orchestration, and while prior work has offered invaluable insights into the mechanisms of contention, Existing predictors cannot capture all facets of memory contention and thus prove to be inaccurate. In our work, we observe that contention happens independently at multiple choke points in memory subsystem and leverage this finding to design Slomo, a contention aware performance predictor. Slomo draws inspiration from a micro architectural blueprint for modeling slowdown through contentiousness and sensitivity and uses practical ML to capture these properties of core running NFs. Slomo is 60% more accurate than prior work and ensures up to 15% better cluster resource utilization. You can find the code online 
and I'm looking forward to answering your questions. Uh, while we wait for questions on Slack, um, w one question that I had is, so, you know, you, you're part of the premise that you started with is that we uh, previous work wasn't looking at all of the bottlenecks and there are bottlenecks that you might not be looking at that are outside of the CPU. So you've brought up the NIC, for example, but you know, there are also within the CPU bottlenecks, like uh, for example, the IOMMU that I noticed you carefully did not draw a box around. So how do we know that this is sufficient and there isn't like another secret uh, performance monitoring paper to be written that's about here are five other things you should consider. And similarly, how, why is the model that you chose rich enough? Why, why don't we need a richer model? Like, what is the backing for why this model? Uh, hi, that is, that is a very good point, and thank you for the question. Um, I think the, the answer is that there's no way to say that we have identified all possible sources of contention or that there's going to be architectures in the future that are going to have other choke points and whatnot. Uh, I think the inside of the paper, what that drove this analysis in the first place was to say that, look, there's not just one, there's many. And so we need to be careful and be more systematic about the way we model contention. And part of the story that we're discussing in the paper has to do with how to do that in a systematic way with many metrics and, you know, such that we can find as many possible sources of contention as possible. Um, yeah, I think that would be my answer okay. to the question. Okay, then a question from Slack from Carrie Williamson. So uh, he says, uh, does the performance prediction model assume that the target NF has a workload that's independent of other NFs? So what happens if, for example, uh, you have two NFs uh, that are contending, uh, that are contending in that they run on the same resources but have dependent workloads? So they're chained together, for instance. Uh, yes, that's a good point. Uh, we do not look at network chat and exchange in that in that paper uh, but that is that is a valid remark in that if you have two nfs that share the same workload the slowdown of the first one might impact the second one and so on and so forth so there is like this propagation of of slowdown is something that should be taken into consideration when we look at nf change in, in the in this particular case we only look at standalone nfs so i guess that's good that's a good point and a good idea for future work Okay, uh, another question from Amin Tishunjian uh, says, okay, so you have this point that resource isolation is not sufficient. So this was, you referred to CAT as it not being sufficient. And he was wondering what other sources of contention did you observe? Were they memory contention, IOMMU contention? Like what was the additional source of contention there? Right, uh, thanks. Thank you, Amin, for that question. So the first, um, the first important source of contention was in the DDIO and, I, and it's, it's interesting that this question comes from me because in his paper, the data contention is mentioned. But we observed that uh, as packet rates go up and as land rates go all the way up to 100 gigabps, uh, contention for, for DDA, for instance, becomes a lot more prominent and a lot more important. And uh, it needs to be taken into, into consideration. Uh, as a result also of the increased packet rates that come with higher line rates is much increased main memory bandwidth utilization that makes variable mem memory latency a concern that, that also needs to be taken into account in that we, I don't think we can, we can no longer assume that memory latency is fixed because main memory bandwidth utilization increases as a function of, of the increased packet rates that we see when we go up to 100 gigabps. Hi, Anthony. Uh, Hello. So, uh, so, uh, let me uh, uh, start my questions first. Uh, so first, uh, can you elaborate more on how you are uh, gonna predict uh, a NFV's performance when it is co-located with other NFV? Because you have not trained on the co-location co mode. So like, uh, yeah. Right, right, how right. Do right. Do right. That's a good question. And it's fair and it's like, there's an analysis of that in our paper. So there's a profiling stage which happens offline for every NF instance that we have in our library, right? And the idea is that we profile that and if we collocate it with a synthetic workload that is tunable and that exercise the entire space of contention, of possible contention values. So essentially we, we um, co-run um, the, 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 the NF under test with, uh, with the synthetic competitor. We observe its performance under various, you know, contentionist values of the synthetic workload. And then, and then in runtime, um, 
we provide an analogy of like what the real competitors, what the contentiousness of the real competitors is. And this is how we fit that into the sensitivity function of target MS. And this is how we generate our predictions. All right. Uh, so we have a, a question from David Tenenhaus. Uh, are serverless functions similar enough to uh, NFs so that uh, they might be also benefit from slow-mo? Oh, that is a good question because we did not uh, experience with uh, serverless architectures, right? But uh, that's, that's a very interesting question and a very interesting approach for prior work. I would assume that, well, we abstract out any competition, any set of competing NFs, we abstract it out through its resource utilization, right? So I would assume that any serverless NF configuration would also incur some uh, resource utilization. So as long as we can quantify that and we can estimate that, then in, in, in a similar fashion, we could predict uh, performance drop in a serverless context. Okay, uh, so... Uh, uh, so uh, and there's one more question from uh, Dongsu Han. Uh, does slow-mo address performance prediction of chained NFs? That is a good question. This is something that we did not address. We only focused on standalone NFs. Um, I would assume that the principles that we used could be extended for a chain scenario, but there's a, an added complexity that the, the performance drop that the first NF in the chain would experience would impact the second one, and then this would, change, this would propagate uh, you know, across the chain. That is a clear direction for future work, but we, in, our, in this version of this work, we only looked at standalone NFs. Okay, uh, one more question um, from uh, Wei Bai. Uh, uh, NF's performance is impacted by traffic pattern. Uh, different NFs may suffer from different traffic patterns. Is slow-mo resilient to traffic pattern changes? Yeah. Yes, yes. So uh, that is a very good question. So when we're talking about an NF instance, this is something that I we didn't, you know, I didn't talk about in, in the slide so much, but it's discussed extensively in the paper. We define NF instance by th by three characteristics. Let's say it's NF type, its configuration, and the expected traffic pattern that it's you know that it's going to process. Because yes, the truth is that, for instance, the number of unique flows will have a heavy like will have an impact on a firewall's performance. It's going to be different if you have like one unique flow versus one million unique flows, right? Uh, yes, so the answer is yes, and we're taking that into consideration. 